to the Quilters Apothecary. Today we are going to take that basic swirl and we're going to turn it into some sash and border designs. So let's head over to the drawing board to work on that. So let's start with the basic. Okay, here is our sash or border. I'm going to start with my hook shape that hooks up. And again, remember, this is the eye, this is the back of the head. When I come out of here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to echo around the outside and under the back of the head and just start to go up. And then I'm going to come out of there, which will automatically flip that hook down. So we're going to end up flipping this up, down, up, down, all the way across the space. So we've got our hook shape up, echo the outside. Remember to come all the way under to come out and go down. Echo around to the back of the head and then come out and flip up. Now, we want to remember the echo is all the way around to the back of the head of the hook on the outside. If you don't do that, what will happen is all of your hooks will flip up and you'll end up just making waves. So again, we're up now. I'm going to echo around to the back of the head, swirl down. Echo around to the back of the head, swirl up. Echo around to the back of the head, swirl down. Echo around to the back of the head, swirl up. All the way across your paper as you practice. Now what I would do is I would um, go to the uh, website and then I would just download the little PDF that has these handouts for the basic swirl, the edge to edge, and these, and trace over, row by row. Trace over the same row, copy it off on your printer and trace over it. By about the third time, you're going to get that rhythm of swirl up, echo around, swirl down, swirl up, swirl down. And you want to make sure to get that rhythm. The rhythm is the most important thing. Now let's take this, and what if we have a bigger space to fill? If we have a bigger space to fill, then what you're going to do is you're going to swirl up and keep your swirl ups in the upper half of the shape you're doing. And when you come around, you fill with the couple spikes to fill that in. Now you swirl down, keep that on the lower half, all your swirl downs low, all your swirl ups high. And then we're going to echo around, spike, spike, swirl up, echo around, spike, spike to fill in all of that space for a wider border space. Swirl up, echo around, spike, spike, all the way down your practice paper. Now again, you can put as many spikes as you need to fill in a bigger space. The one thing I would say is if you are in an area that is bigger than, let's say one, two, three, four, five, let's say six or seven inches, you want to make sure to do the following. On your swirl ups, everything's going along good. We keep that up in the upper half. When you come back around to do your spike unders, really bring those spikes back, back. Then when you do your swirl down, Come around there and really take those spikes in here. Really twist them around there. Now you swirl up, echo around and under, spike, spike, spike. Because what will happen is when you bring those spikes up and into here, that's going to fill all this space so that you don't get the floppy fabric if you stopped right here. And you'd end up with a straight line. It's going to be a little bit more cohesive and it's going to look like a nicer um, border design for you in your borders if you do that. Okay, so let's take these to the machine. Okay, now we're going to use that basic swirl in a border shape. And what I have here on our practice piece is a border sewn out. And we're going to start with the basic swirl and then we're going to get a little bit more extreme as we move our way around this portion of our border. So I've locked my stitches. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to go into a corner. Before we even start this, I want to say with the basic swirl, no matter which of the versions I'm using, fake the corners and throw in a spike if there's open space to maneuver. Don't take a lot of time to plan this. People don't know the difference between spending a lot of time to plan a corner on this particular border design or just going for it and filling it in with some more spikes. Throw my glasses on here. We're going to start with a swirl out for that basic swirl design. I keep that toward the center of the border space. I come around the back of the head with my echo and then of course my next hook shape is going to flip the opposite way. I'm going to come around back of the head 
And then I'm going to just continue right around that corner. Come around to the back of the head. Swirl down. Echo around to the back of the head, which makes that next hook flip up. Swirl around the back of my head. Swirl down. Now, let's say we were working in a border that was a little bit wider than this. So on this next one, I'll show you what I would do then. Okay, echo around the back of the head. Now, we're gonna go into a wider border, so the swirl up stays on the upper half. I come around, echo, start out, and then come back and throw in another spike. My swirl down is on the lower part of the sash or border. Echo around, and I put a few extra spikes up there. How many spikes do you add? Well, as much as it takes to fill in the extra space. What I would say is be a little bit consistent on how many spikes you put in each one. And remember, with those, you want to really reach up into that empty space so that you don't get the floppy fabric um, situation happening. So I'm going to come out of there now, swirl down, boom, boom, swirl up, echo around, spike, spike, swirl down. Now this is one of those corners, so now I'm going to come around to fill in that corner with one and maybe a mini spike right up in there. Come out, which is going to flip me out. So again, every other swirl flips the opposite way. And you're going to work yourself within that throat space. Until you're done. Now typically, at that point, what I would do is I finish the border within that throat space. I would go and continue what was in the body portion here of my quilt. And then, as I roll, then I would continue down both sides. I tend to be a, um, once I roll that thing under there, I don't want to see it again. So I'll do my borders first just to stabilize and keep the quilt as square as it can be. And then I'll fill in the body portions, whether it's custom block designs or an edge to edge or something like that. And then I roll the quilt, do all my borders, because frankly, I could care less how many times I have to change thread um, on my way across. I, again, for me, I've been doing this for so many years that once it goes under that rail, I really don't want to see it unless it's a special case like a show quilt or something where I want to stabilize it first. So that is our basic swirl design. You all have a great day, and we at Quilters Apothecary, thank you very much, and take care of each other.